Is it a bird? Is it a plane? No, I think it's a whale. Welcome to Whale On. Tonight, we're looking at law and order. Has the moral fabric of our society hit rock bottom, or are we really no worse than we always have been? Plus music, a little entertainment, and your chance to win a club-styled holiday for two. Right, roll titles. Five, four, three, two, one. OK, now, this is a real postman. Graham, how are you? I'm doing fine, thank you. Good. Much. And uh, one of our uh, Whale On viewers actually spotted Graham doing poems uh, on his round, wrote in and told us all about it, and he really is very good. Listen to this, Graham. Take it away. When I was young, my mother would tell me, honesty always prevailed. It's a shame that the judge didn't agree when I got jailed. Oh, very wonderful. It's a bit cold out here. We'll go inside, right? OK, yes. this way. Follow Not me. Way, OK, side. follow me. Up here. Right. Um, you do a lot of things like this, or not? Uh, well, I've been doing it for about a year, uh -huh. but this is the first I've really done in front of a live Look, audience. Is you? Oh, well, they like it. You see that, Graham? Oh, yes. Fantastic, Graham. That was absolutely. Yeah, the response was great, wasn't it? Now, uh, are you going to pack in this postman business or not? Uh, after tonight, probably I will. You will. Uh, I might even take your job. You might. Well, listen, I'm getting old, and you might well be uh, me in the line for it. Hold your stomach in a little bit and do your flyer. <laughs> I've, got, I've got a lot of it. I've got to tell you that I've got a lot yeah. of it. It's postman's undone. Post, but... Postman's skirt. Postman's paunch. Yeah, yeah. Postman's paunch, yes, OK. It's not well, uh, we, we've got a fairly serious programme on uh, this evening, Graham, actually, so uh, for a little more merriment, would you like to do one more for...? That's the camera. You, you love the camera, don't you? It loves you. It does love you. Yeah. It does love you, yes. Hello, Mum. OK. <laughs> yes. Have you published these anywhere or not? I've been trying to. I actually wrote a children's book which got turned down flat. Did it? Yes. Hmm. Oh. OK. Well, we'd like to hear more from Graham, wouldn't we? Yes. Yeah. Take it away. Go right, on. I'd like to read a verse now. It's my favourite one. It's called My God and No Mercenary. Best one you've got, Graham. Unlike... Sorry, excuse me. Can we do that again? No. All right. <laughs> oh, all right. Get over it now. There are many ways to protect your home. Mine was to buy a garden gnome. I call him G.I. Jerry. My garden gnome... Mercenary. <laughs> Unlike many gnomes who carry a rod, <coughs> mine is equipped with a Kalashnikov. Many a thief has fallen foul to my doorstep sentry when they have tried an illegal entry. <laughs> <laughs> yes, 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 I've heard that one before. <laughs> For dogs that may bark and usually bite, and burglar alarms, they go off at night. But none is a match for my plastic pawn, who does his duty from dusk to dawn. Oh, lovely. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Brilliant. There we are. If you want to see more of him, folks, Graham Quinton is his name. We really mean that. Graham, thank you very much indeed. Postman, poet. Right, fantastic. Off you go then. And uh, Gary Jacobs is on next, isn't he? And I think, Gary, you're going to get out there and we're going to, uh, we're going to do some stuff all about the law. Uh, this is becoming very popular, actually. A lot of people, of course, now cannot afford any sort of legal help. Uh, Why is it these things always I don't know, you always have that problem. Sit down here, sit down and then I'll, I'll, I'll do it for you, that's OK. Yeah, that? um, Gary, of course, is uh, wearing more clothes, more, more clothes by Versace. Yes. And he looks very yes. nice. Yes. Very nice indeed. Uh, and before we go on, first I've got a letter here and... Is that right? You're not going to let me read it, are you? No, no, absolutely not. even a not. second of No, 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 you probably won't. Anyway, this comes from the Barbican. I always think it's nice to know that we have viewers in the Barbican. Yes, yes. Both Don't you think? Them. Both of them. Yeah. I know them both. Yeah. Uh, anyway, it's uh, from Gareth Evans. Mm. 
friend of yours? No. Oh, okay, fine. No. Gareth Evans. He said, I was recently, and this is very serious, very sad. Uh, I was recently knocked off my bicycle by a car. The driver stopped briefly before driving off, leaving me with a broken bone in my foot. And after half a mile hobble to the nearest police station, the police were very helpful and followed up the incident on my behalf, but have now said that they are not going to take any further action. I think this is because there were no witnesses, he says. So far, it's cost me over £75 in taxi fares. He's as extravagant as you. <laughs> and would very much like this money back, as I'm a poor student. Oh. Oh. Mm. What action do you suggest I take? Well, if they find out who the driver was, he can actually sue the driver for damages. And if the driver doesn't pay him up, then he can recover, for example, if the driver is uninsured, from an organisation called the Motor Insurers Bureau. Motor Insurers Bureau. Motor Insurers okay. Bureau. Well, we, we'll yes. send you back a little note about this. Yes, okay. yes indeed. Very, but, very fine organisation, paying out fortunes of our money. Of our money. Yep. So he might as well have some as well. Absolutely. Even if he, he deserves it more than yes, we do. Yes, OK. Yes. Uh, so if you get run over or an accident like that, and even if you had no witnesses, and if you have uh, no chance of finding out who it was, you can still... If you, if you don't know who the person was, you can recover for injuries. Mm. If you do know who the person was and they're not insured, you can also recover for damage to vehicles or property over £180. All is not yet lost. OK, yes. we have some people in the audience who uh, have got some problems. Where's the first one? There's yeah. a gentleman at the back there. OK, um, if you... If you want to bring the microphone some... in, there we are. Go on, stretch over. Have I'm ready. <laughs> if you want to bring someone to court yourself independently, how would you go about that? You mean bringing your own proceedings? Yeah. Well, don't. Um, uh -huh. If it's under. <laughs> <laughs> if it... Next question. Yes, if it's under. <laughs> 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 Listen, if it's under £1,000, you, you can take what's called a small claim, go along to the county court, explain your claim, they'll help you fill in the forms. If it's over that amount, my advice is consult a solicitor. We are not there just for the sake of it. We can be of help. But as we say every week, every time on this programme, legal aid is fast diminishing the availability of it, but you may qualify for legal aid, and you should certainly see a solicitor and get professional advice in the same way as you wouldn't treat yourself for a medical complaint. A uh, gentleman here has a question. Yes, uh, a friend of mine received compensation after a burns injury at work. Um, however, the um, damage has been longer term than the doctors originally anticipated. Is it possible for him to reopen the case and file for further claims? Well, he probably couldn't reopen against the person who was responsible for causing his injuries. But if the doctors who advised were negligent, in other words, they have a duty to give proper advice and they failed to do so, then he might possibly be able to bring an action within a limited period of time, normally three years of finding out that they may have been negligent. So he should consult a solicitor to look at the, go back to the solicitor who helped him in the first place and see what he has to say about the advice given. If the advice was right at the time, then I'm afraid to say he has had it. And it often happens. What's nowadays going on is that insurance companies are not actually making a payment that is full and final settlement. They're pay paying structured payments over a period for people who do suffer very bad injuries. OK. I think we're going to have to leave it there. We're running oh, okay. rapidly out of time. We're, we've we'll had a lot of response to this, but we'll talk to you later because tonight we're talking about law and order and you have some strong views on that, don't you? One or two. One or and two. if we ever get into trouble here in the studio tonight, London's smallest but most perfectly formed studio, uh, you'll help us out. Well, I'm the bouncer. Yeah. OK, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Gary Jacobs. <laughs> right. Just, uh, just before we carry on, where are we? Over here, camera two. OK, that's the address. Whale on MMTV, 5 to 7 Carnaby Street, London, W1V, 1PG. And if you have uh, some sort of... Uh, uh, legal problem that you think Gary could help you with, this is the address to write to, and you can either come into the studio or we'll read out your letter. Now, we've got a vote line on tonight. Do you think that capital punishment should be brought back? Uh, if you do, here we are, the numbers 081-33536. If you don't, 081-33537. Oh, is it really? It's 0891. Uh, 0891. Uh, Oh, it's up on the screen now. OK, 0891 double three double five three six. if you think it should, or 0891 double three double five three seven. if you don't. Should capital punishment be brought back? Back to me, thank you. OK, right, now... <sighs> with me are Terry Dix and Alan Michael. They are two gentlemen from the House of Commons. Terry, first, can I move that? That's uh, uh, an edifice of the uh, producer. You've got a colleague like that. <laughs> Which one? He's on his side. No, no, no. no. <laughs> We're going to see him later. We're going to see him later. <laughs> Terry, have, uh, have we sunk to an all-time low, or is it just a little hiatus that we're going... Oh, that was a good word, wasn't it? A hiatus that we're going well, through. Well, I think it's been getting worse, but it's, it's much worse now than ever before, and it's simply because uh, we haven't got enough strength in the family, not enough parental discipline, the churches are out of touch, 
and uh, the government, my government, um, haven't done enough. What we need to do, to answer your first question, is to reintroduce capital punishment, we should reintroduce corporal punishment, mm. and we should make parents responsible for the crime of their children. You believe, you believe that um, beating and stuff should come back? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the thing is... Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean... You know, what about a cat of nine tails or some... Would you think... Uh, I, what, what I need is, is sufficient yeah. uh, corporal punishment to make people tell the line. Uh -huh. What you can't have is all the ladies of 80 being beaten up and mugged mm. and the thugs getting away with a slap over the wrist. To be, uh, to be serious, Terry, I think that actually the statistics show that it isn't the old ladies that are getting mugged more, it's the young men still. Um, and that's perhaps the fault of the media for making people uh, scared within their own homes. But we have seen mobs wanting to attack uh, a van carrying two ten-year-olds who haven't yet been that's taken right. to court. What sort of society yeah. are we you live in where these people that. can yeah. do that? You can't it's disgusting. That. But no wonder people are being violent. But, you, but you've got to take the other side. The, the uh, feeling that people have when a two-year-old is, is, loses life in that way, you can understand the feeling that it goes through people's minds. Yeah, but isn't it the rest of us, the rest of society that has brought oh, oh, people come on, to behave no, in that way? We're going through the old church thing. It's society's fault. It's everybody else's fault except the individuals. Parents have a particular responsibility. One question. If it does happen to be two children who have carried out this murder, do you want to see them hung? Do you want to see uh, them swinging from no, the lamppost? Not at all. What you do, it, it, I've actually said, and I said again here, that what you do with, with ten-year-olds who behave in a bad way, or nine-year-olds, you make the parents suffer the crime they would You would like to hang the parents? I didn't say that. No, but you're, would you? You're putting words... No, of course not. Fine, what I'm okay. saying to you is that you make the parents responsible for the behaviour of their children. <laughs> OK, Terry, we're going to come back in a few moments. Let me go to Alan. First of all, Alan, uh, one question. I, this has got nothing to do with what we're talking about, Alan. Look me in the eye and tell me, is Tony Blair going to be the new leader of the Labour Party? We've got a very good leader at the moment. Tony's going to be the next Home Secretary and he'll be very good at that. Alan, come on. I mean, you're never going to win an election with a man called John Smith looking like he does, are you? Yes, I think we are. You I think mean, he's, are? A, he's a very fine man and I think anybody who listens to him realises mm. that he's a man of very practical and compassionate views. And that's what we need leading the country. Look at me in a straight face and you believe that. OK, fine. I just thought that Tony Blair looked as if he was being groomed for greater things. Oh, we've got many potential what? leaders in the Labour Party. We're not short of them. Alan, what is uh, the Labour Party's view? You believe that perhaps all this retribution the other side are, uh, are talking about is not going to do any good? No, we think there's a very, it's important that we should get a balance and that's why the approach we've adopted is that you should be tough on crime and tough on the causes of crime and if you get if you get either of the, either side of that wrong then you're going to run into all sorts of problems how tough? Uh, as tough as is needed, but the, the, the thing is... Yeah, you but need how to tough get... is that? I mean, you're saying as tough as is needed, do you want to go back to corporal punishment? No. In do you want to go back to capital punishment? How tough? I, I think as far as capital punishment is concerned, the record of the British criminal justice system in catching the wrong people uh, is one that uh, leads you to rule out the capital punishment idea straight away. But can I, can I put it this way? There's an awful lot of crime in this country, and a lot of it was the sort of thing that you were referring to a moment ago, and which was going on in the 50s and 60s as well, which we don't need. You don't need to allow youngsters to get involved in criminal activity. You don't need uh, to fail to pick them, ca catch them up short when they start getting involved in offending. And if you could do those things properly, you would then uh, end up with a, a small number. You would still end up with some who need secure accommodation and see, need discipline I'm, and so I'm on. interested because we hear that since the death penalty was abolished in 1964, I think, that uh, murder has gone up. Of course, it has to a certain extent gone up, but if you look ahead to, or if you look back before it had been uh, abolished, if you look to 1952, there were more people being killed in 1952 or murdered in 1952 than there were in 1965 after the death penalty had been abolished. And those figures never take into account the, the rising population of the country either. Well, I think that's right. I mean, people tend to have a feeling of anger, which is what's been demonstrated over recent events, which doesn't always go to saying, well, what is the cause of this? How can we diminish this? How can we diminish the amount of burglary and car crime? Uh, and recently I published a document which shows how much those two things have increased and also puts forward suggestions about how it could be diminished. OK, Alan, thank you both very much indeed for the moment. And uh, we'll be back talking more about law and order a little later. Now, uh, a round of applause for the gentleman, please. Just to... <laughs> OK, that's enough. Um... Now... Competition time, and uh, as last week's holiday caused so many people to uh, phone the competition line, we have got a club-styled holiday for you tonight on the programme. Are we going to get... Are we going to think that's hogging the limelight somewhat? Uh, are we going to uh, talk about this, do the competition now, or just mention? We are going to do the competition now, so uh, if you would like to win this holiday, then uh, all you have to do is answer this one fantastic question, all right? Uh, on which island in San Antonio, San Antonio, by the way, is where this holiday is based, all right? Uh, you go for a one-week club holiday for two to San Antonio in Ibiza. 
and uh, it's to be taken before the 20th of June. So you have no excuse, you can go away as soon as you like. All you have to do is answer this. Uh, on which island is San Antonio located? Is it Iceland, the Isle of Wight, or Ibiza? <laughs> if, you, if you think you know the answer, then all you have to do is ring this number, 0891 900 007. 0891 900 007. Uh, on which island is San Antonio located? It's a very pretty place, actually. Iceland, Ibiza, or the Isle of Wight. <laughs> now, a little, uh, a little culture has come into the programme as we're talking uh, to two members from the House of uh, What's It's. Uh, we thought we'd bring in a little... Uh, you're going to like this, actually, Terry, because I think you were very rude at one point about, about uh, opera. Still you, am. you are still, but what, how did you describe oh, it? Just remind you. me. Well, I, I said, I said, lots uh, of. No, what I actually said was that opera was a, a, an overweight Italian with a dress on singing in his own language. Exactly, with, exactly. And a man in, and, okay. a, and a ballet dancer so, right, with the man right. in the pair so, of tights with so, the lunchbox. That never so, so terror, terribly, uh, terribly cultural tonight. We see where the Tories are coming from. I do apologise. Alan Sivright, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Somebody's taking the mic, I know. Right, now, I, uh, I didn't realise that uh, our little opera pieces were going to be quite so popular, but uh, not only do people write in and say they want to see more, Terry Dix we're going to have a very strong word with at the end of the programme, get Alan to sit on him, probably. Uh, but I see that Harry Enfield, Alan, has uh, started nicking the idea, and I hear you had something to do with this. Well, I landed up being the consultant of the programme which mostly meant that when you're working with a famous comedian, you usually find that they're in a permanent state of worry. But it's up to the public to decide whether they like the series or not, which begins uh, Well, it's begun, but don't worry about it's it. It's begun. Yes. Uh, so it's on different times in different areas, you see, Alan. That's the problem. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know better than I do. Oh, I don't know why I'm trying. Uh, Alan, so please, could we now, because Terry basically doesn't understand opera, we're going to do tonight Carmen. OK, so in those immortal words, if we cue the music, Alan will now talk us through it. Pleasure. <laughs> Carmen is, I suppose, the world's most famous opera. Many people think so. I just want you to imagine that on a lovely summer day in the morning in Seville, on one side of the stage you have the barracks and the soldiers, and on the other side of the stage you have a cigarette factory. All the men are waiting for the girls to come out at 12 o'clock. Well, they come out, and then comes Carmen, the gypsy girl. Now, she has a creed about love and life. She looks at men the way men usually look at women, and she quite clearly makes it be known that if she fancies you, mind out, and if you don't fancy her, well, you better take care. She notices amongst the soldiers a young man called Don Jose. She goes up to him and she throws a flower at him and laughs in his face and runs back into the factory, followed by the rest of the girls. A little bit later, his sort of schoolhouse sweetheart turns up. And it's very evident that she's been mad in love with him forever and he's brought messages to him from, from his mother. When she leaves, suddenly, lo and behold, there's a commotion in the cigarette factory. Carmen and another girl have had a terrific fight and Carmen has slashed her face with a knife. Don Jose is sent off to arrest her and bring her back. So when she emerges, tied up from the cigarette factory, Zuniga, the head guard, asks her questions. She refuses to answer. She just sings into his face. Well, Zuniga orders Don Jose to take her off to prison. When she's left alone with the young man, she looks at him and she says, I have no lover. She sings to him about going down to the ramparts of the city of Seville, and there, she would dance and sing. He tells her to stop singing to him. She says, come on, Jose. Well, it's very simple to understand that she not only seduces him, but he lets her escape and he takes the can. He is sent off to jail. Weeks later, she's in the inn and she knows that he's going to come there. And when he does turn up, she taunts him. First of all, she says to him, I'll dance for you, I'll sing with you. But when he hears the call, of the trumpet sending for him to come back. She says, ta ra ta, -ta you hear the bugle call. Well, she goes to work on him again. 
Suddenly, the officer Zuniga appears. The two men have a battle and a fight over Carmen, and he, unfortunately, has joined her against his wishes to become a smuggler. In the next act, he is that smuggler. Their love affair has collapsed. It's really on the rocks. By this time, she's interested in a wonderful-looking bullfighter called Escanillo. Nicaela, the girl I told you about earlier, turns up to tell Don Jose that his mother is dying. The poor man is now destroyed by the gypsy girl. But she has read the cards, and in the cards she sees that there's death for both of them. She's a fatalist. And in that last act, he comes to beg her to go away with him, and she says, no, free I was born and free I will die. Here is your ring, tiens. With that, he rushes towards her and stabs her. And as Carmen has foretold, the cards do not lie. You cannot cheat the fate of the game of death. Oh. 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 oh, dear, Alan, I have a cloak for every occasion, Sivright. Thank you, Alan, that is fantastic. <laughs> Marvellous carbon in three minutes. Oh, slightly over. Uh, just before we take the break, let me remind you, if you'd like to win that uh, competition on the fantastic island of Thing Me Bob, all you have to do is answer that one simple question and ring this number, 0891 900 007. 0891 900 007. Don't go away very far. We're back in a couple of minutes. <laughs> OK, here we are, whale on tonight. Now, we're going to try something different. I have noticed that uh, on those programmes during the day, they all have cookery shows, and I thought, well, we need it. And again, if you like any of these little bits we throw into whale on, do write in, let us know, and we'll keep them on. Uh, this is Nessie. We found her. She's got a, a, a bed, um, bed and breakfast place up in the Highlands. And uh, people go... I some chocolate in the catlet, James. Oh, oh, there it is. Oh, oh. I thought I'd lost it for a moment. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, um, oh, it's that... not chocolate! Oh, oh my god! No. Oh okay. my uh, oh. Nessie, yes. Okay, Nessie, could you get. Uh, Nessie actually specialises in Highland food, isn't that right? Yes, well, yes. Um, I, was, I was the cook at the prison, and you know, I do have a prison record. I shot my granny's brains clear right her tiny head. Oh, good. By do you think accident. we should talk about that tonight? Well, you know, only to tell you that the sanitation conditions are terrible. I didn't pee for a year. I could never straddle the bucket. Could you not? No, they had to let me out eventually. Oh. Have you, um, have you managed to get that sorted or not? Still, yes, yes, yes. Because what we need is a doctor like they have. We'll get a doctor one week on. Oh, that would be fabulous. Yes, yes. Oh, fantastic. Could... Well, I wanted to show you here what I did for the boys. Please. In, in the prison, you know, we used to make my chocolate Easter basket mm. bonanza. And it was a fantastic, it was a fantastic thing for everyone to make. You join in yes. and you lay some beautiful flowers there. And when you come back to me later, I'll be showing you how to make the mixture and cover everything in chocolate. And can we, like they do on those other programmes, invite some of the guests to come round and sample the food? Oh, that would be wonderful, okay. James. I'll That'd see you great. later on. Nessie, Hi, fantastic. Uh, Nessie, ladies and gentlemen. Great. Back to the pulpit now, ladies and gentlemen, our regular look at what's happening behind the doors of Westminster. And the honourable member for Harlow, Mr Jerry Hayes, is with us here this evening. And, uh, Jerry, first of all, what no, is this uh, I read no, in the newspaper? No, Speeding no, Tory MP no. is banned. Oh, no, <laughs> don't, don't. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Listen to this. He admitted driving at 95 miles an hour. Oh. You should be Hanging hung. Here. You should be hung. <laughs> well uh, hung. Yeah. I've got a couple. I've got a couple of uh, things to ask you. But we've had a, a couple of letters. Here's one from Denton in Manchester. Oh yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. You know, Dave Thompson wrote to us. It's a very long letter. I'll just. Yes. I'll just. If I can, appraise see this letter. Yeah, the bit in red. The bit in red at the bottom here. It says, uh, like the blah blah blah. Dear James, though, shouldn't you have a guest Labour MP on every week in the interests of fairness and equality? Okay. Yeah. Just a minute. Oh. Or couldn't you find one as smug and irritating as Jerry Hayes? <laughs> <laughs> Probably right. Uh, yeah. So, what's uh, been going on at the uh, Palace of Fun this week? Well, I mean, it's all, it's all Maastricht, isn't it? It's all Maastricht at the moment. When is your party going to realise that we don't want to have anything to do with Europe? Yes, we right. do. 
bollocks. Oh! James, Listen, you're just the sort of person I, who thinks an innuendo love, is an Italian suppository, I, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> no wonder you're an MP. I love going to... Listen, I like to be in Italy, yeah. Tuscany, where yeah, all the yeah. Labour people go. Yeah, I love yeah. to go to France. I like yeah. going to the continent. Yeah. But we don't want to be there all the time. They don't want us. We don't want them. No. So what we need is to stop this EC thing, a waste of money, put all the money back into this country that we've wasted. Give it to us. And give it to us, yes, I couldn't have put it back. <laughs> yeah, give, it to, give it to Danny. Yeah. So do you think we could do that or not? No, of course we can't. No? Yeah, our heart is in Europe. We're in the heart of Europe. 55% of our exports rubbish. are in Europe. Rubbish, absolutely. You know that's rubbish. Would yeah. you try and do something for me? I'll and what, lastly, what, what was that bit about Norman Lamont and you? Oh, Norman, I, had lunch, Norman I had lunch with Norman Lamont the other day and we yes. went into the, the dining room at uh, number 11. He says, oh, he says, I, I saw you. What was that, the chat with the beard and, you know, the glasses and, 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 and the tie that looks like his tongue? Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think he meant you. So, dishing out condoms. We weren't dishing out condoms, were we? Well, okay. you tell Uncle Norman <laughs> if he wants to come on this he programme, watches. he's he more watches. than welcome. He All right, watches. ladies and gentlemen, Jerry Hayes. More from him later. <laughs> OK. I, uh, I also wanted to know why they were selling off water, but never mind, time is, uh, is running out. Welcome Adam Simpson from the Prison Reform Trust, Glyn Morgan, evangelist, and Stephen Green from the Conservative Family Campaign. Gentlemen, welcome. Let me start off with Adam, first of all. Adam, are we doing too much for people in prison? I mean, are they having too good a time? Is that why we seem to have a, a lack of standards at the moment? Actually, it's the contrary. Prison conditions over the last 20 years have got far, far worse. Prison sentences have got far longer. So you've got people spending more time in worse conditions, and at the same time, you've got increasing crime. Yes, but surely if, uh, if, if prison was more of a, a, a deterrent, and I think if I, if I bring um, Stephen Green in here, and Stephen, you would agree, if, if prison was more of a deterrent, would we not have people behaving better when they came out? Well, it's only half of the question, isn't it? The other half is a spiritual question, which wasn't even addressed by the Archbishop of York on Sunday. You have to bring God into the, into the equation. If you chuck God out, you can't... You see, they're laughing already. Well, just, this we'll is why, minute, this Stephen, is why Stephen, the crime rate is up. going up. Is it They'll yeah. snigger yeah. away and it'll go up and up yeah. and up and up. Yeah. And we'll be back here in five years' time wondering why, when you chuck God out, you don't behave in a godly fashion. OK, Stephen, uh, let me leave you for a moment, because Glyn Morgan is an evangelist. Come back to you. Is that... Glyn, is that right? I mean, is that the problem? God is uh, no longer with us all? Um, well, in every area of life, you have... Uh, rules, laws, regulations of one kind or another. I thought you were and American as as then when you started <coughs> talking. No, no. Yeah. Okay. And as, as far as the moral law of God is concerned, we have undermined it over the, over the past years. Mm -hmm. And consequently, as a result of undermining the moral law of God, we have, in our nation, got a tremendous spiritual vacuum, which has undermined the, the civil laws as we're seeing today. And what has brought this all to the fore is the atrocities that we've heard of over the last mm. few weeks, actually. <laughs> now, okay. OK, I say, no, yeah, all right. You reckon if we all had a belief in God, if, in fact, we uh, have lost our belief, and I, I don't know whether everybody has, I think still a lot of people do believe in God, but you think not as many are, uh, are openly believing in as God? As no, I'm not to. just saying a belief in God. What I'm saying, one of the greatest preventions of crime, as far as I'm concerned, is a, um, what the Bible calls a conversion experience, um, as Jesus okay. called it, being born again. <laughs> And that changes, it totally transforms a person's life. Now, Stephen, and you believe, okay, Stephen, you believe that, that perhaps our family values are, are rock bottom, don't you? No, I think we've got a fair way to go. I don't think we're at rock bottom. You think, think we're going to, get... to go any further? Yes, I mean... Uh, How much further? Well, I mean, you've got John Major, who, um, who thinks we ought to condemn a little more and understand a little less. Well, I didn't see much of that attitude when his friend David Mellor was caught with his trousers around his ankles. Do you agree with that? We've got double... No, we've got, we've got double standards. These people here have got double standards. They, they'll cheat a little bit on their insurance claim, but they uh -huh. don't want to be cheated by a tax, taxi driver. Sorry, Stephen, if I can pull you back. I know it's exciting being in the same room as me, but just control yourself a little. <laughs> what I want to know is, do you think, then, if we're going to go even further down, uh, there's any point in worrying about it until we hit bottom and then perhaps we'll do something. No, I think that there is an obligation on, on men and women of goodwill, particularly uh, an obligation on, on Christians, believers in God, to speak out. Okay. If we don't speak out, then we'll be condemned along with the rest. Adam, these uh, two gentlemen, God-fearing guys, I mean, is this what we need? A little more God in the prisons? A little more Bible bashing? And I think probably Stephen would think a, a little more uh, of the, the, the iron fist as well. Difficult. No, not necessarily. I agree with him that prison conditions are, are worse. It's only part, you know, deterrent is only part of the equation. The difficulty with this is that the minute that you get big explosions of panic like this, the minute you get a few horrendous stories, and they're terrible stories, 
you get people coming out of the woodwork saying oh, our country is going to the pot, uh, it, it, there's a moral panic that uh, the whole of society is falling apart. It happens time and time again. About every ten years we have these things. And in the end they go away again and, uh, and, and that's it. The danger is that we may rush in to really punitive measures and right. make things worse, not better. Unbelievable Adam, complacency. Adam, just a minute. Adam. Yeah, I, I think that what has happened over the past few weeks is that we've had real atrocities in our, in our nation. How do you like, feel about like the, the, the people who committed this crime? We don't know who they are, as we were reminded earlier. How do you, uh, we're talking about the young two-year-old who was killed. How do you feel about that? Do well, you have there was, there any a... sort of compassion for the people who did it? Well, I don't know the, the circumstances, and that's not been brought to court yet. No, I'm asking you, as yet. a Christian, do you have but, a, would um, you have any com com compassion for the yeah. people who did it? I don't know who they are. No, no, I think in, I think in every area uh, of life there are two things that, that go hand in hand. And certainly as far as we're talking about children, for instance, mm. and we're talking about family life, there are two things that go side by side. The one is firm discipline within the home, mm. and the other, going hand in hand with that, is fervent love. And both of these things have got to go together. Okay. And I think what has This is fine, you're talking about this, is fine, Glyn, but unfortunately a lot of people live in the real world, and in the real world a lot of people see images <coughs> on television, in the newspapers, hear about it on radio, of people having a fantastic lifestyle, and a lot of people have got absolutely sod all. A lot of those people who are having a fantastic lifestyle are spiritually dead. I, th I think that you're... Yes, but I what I'm saying to a, you, what I'm I saying to you, Stephen, never mind about the spiritual side of it, what are we actually <laughs> doing wrong? Well, I wouldn't want to trade places with them, that's all I'm saying. Mm -hmm. I mean, you say that there aren't any families doing what, what, uh, you know, what Glyn I says, didn't say that, but no. there are families out there who are doing their best to bring up their children. What are the biggest problems in society? What are we doing? Who are the people who are causing all this trouble? I think it's a collective thing. I mean, we've all led ourselves you know, get into this mess, and we're all going to have to you know, turn around as a nation to get out of it. I don't think it's hit rock bottom. It's been, the statistics show it's been, you know, in spite of what you said, the, the statistics show it's been going wrong since about the 1950s. Look at any social indicator that murder okay. probably... We're murder, going, it's all going to we're going to come back a little later. We're going to talk more deeply about this, and the audience are going to come in. I know they have a lot of things to say about it. Thank you for the moment very much indeed, gentlemen. Now... Nessie, how is it going over there? Oh, it's going beautifully, James. Shall I sh I'm ready for the first dipping. What the heck is that? Well, uh, chocolate-covered Easter bunnies. Yes. You see it there. And that's amazing. That's, that's very nice. And it's very popular with the children. Very popular with the children. Very, very nice. And Can... you, you just arrange it in the basket. Yes. And another one of my favourite is the chocolate-covered bananas. Oh, chocolate-covered bananas. You know, I like those too. Yes. Easter, yes. You know, and then you just arrange that in the basket there, <laughs> by the bonnet. And to decorate... I hope the Rue brothers are watching this. Very festive season. And I tell you, there's no one who won't be happy to receive one of Nessie's <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, bananas. Nessie. Very <laughs> nice. OK. Uh, right, I tell you what, I actually, I actually think it would be quite nice if we got the honourable member for Harlow to go over and try it a little later on and just make sure that it's nice. Uh, can I just uh, remind you about the competition we're uh, running at the moment? Let's put the number up on the board before we take the break. If you would like to win a club-style holiday for two at San Antonio in Ibiza, then uh, all you have to do is uh, answer this one question. Uh, on which island is San Antonio located? <laughs> I always think at this time in the morning you're not paying too much attention, so you may have uh, you may have missed it. Is it in Iceland, Ibiza, or the Isle of Wight? Ring this number coming up on the screen now: 0891 007 If you know the answer, and somebody be winging their way there before the end of June. Okay, we're going to take a break. Don't go away. Back in around about three or four. What? Three? Oh, two two minutes. Back in two minutes. Okay, fine. <laughs> Welcome back. Now, tonight we're talking about law and order. We'll be back to that in a few moments. Uh, let me just uh, tell you the people who we are sending off. First of all, to Los Angeles. Woo! Woo! And you get a visit to the set of Baywatch. Woo! Woo! And you will be flying on Virgin Atlantic Airlines. Woo! Woo! And you want to know, of course, who is going? Well, the lucky person who's going over there for that marvellous holiday, the winner of the competition, is, of course, Vicky Conway of Sheffield. Well done, Vicky. And you may remember we also gave away um, a 20s ski holiday, a 20s Falcon ski holiday. And the person who's going on there, will you shut up over there for the moment or I'll come over there and sort you out. We have a little discipline. That's the problem with this country, lack of moral... 
Uh, anyway, the uh, winner of that is... Um, Viv Seagull. Seagull. That's strange, isn't it? Viv Seagull of Dover. <laughs> is, that a tr is that made up? That's real. That's absolutely right. Oh, oh, Mr Mansfield is there tonight. Oh, oh, is he? You did. Don't you get stroppy like that, dear. OK, fine. Um, right, so well done to both of you. Now, music tonight. We had, uh, we had a letter from a, a couple of guys. A, look, this sort of letter, that sort of thing. Uh, some guys said, we enclose a video and tape of our band. We are called The Bards. OK, this is it. Where are you guys? They're in the front of the audience over there. Now, you, these are... Th Shut up. These are three guys, the bards, and uh, introduce yourselves. Who's Danny? I'm Danny. Who is Paul? I'm Paul. And who is... Uh, Danny. Danny. <laughs> <laughs> Me! Good, OK. Now, you're, all, you're, you're unemployed. Yes. We're all unemployed. You've got a band. Yes. Yeah. I'm and trying you... not to get angry, James. Right, OK. Uh, how did you raise the money to actually make, uh, make this record? No. <laughs> <laughs> we saved it all right. <laughs> Suggest, I may, may I suggest, Danny, one... Uh, no, we didn't. Why, is that a joke here? Yeah? I know you were, but while Stephen Green is here and Terry Dick's the other side, it's not a good Sorry, thing to joke We with. saved up all our doll money. Yes. And <laughs> we saved it. For you a bit got fun. this. You got a CD made. You got it into yeah. the shops yes. yourself. Yes. yes. And we're going to. And this is a, 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 a video that you did yourself. Yes. Let's, let's have a look at this. Ladies and gentlemen, budget, the bard. So and it's like called. It. What's it called? Thing. 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 Okay. Here we go. Look at this. <laughs> Very good indeed, very good. We seem to uh, we seem to caught everybody on the hops here. You think they got it sorted out now? Thank you very much indeed. Listen, lots of luck with that. And uh, who knows, we could well get you back doing it live, couldn't yeah, we? Yeah, we'd like to come on next week. We've got loads of would. songs with, with, well, we can't afford to record them. Now so shut so we just up. Oh, yeah. Too so much wine. Right, let's go back to uh, what we're talking about, Law and Order tonight. And we also have a vote line running, so if you would uh, like to vote, should capital punishment be reinstated in this country those are the numbers to vote on if i could move the gentleman behind you i could see what they are if you move to the side there we are 0891 33 55 36 if you think they should or if you think capital punishment should not be brought back uh, it's 33 55 37. Janie Jones was well known, of course, in the uh, 60s and 70s, Janie? That's right, yes. For sex, drugs, rock and roll. Yes, that's oh, right. Uh, um, if, uh, if the bar don't shut up, thank you. You served how long in prison? Seven year sentence and a £16,000 fine, and I served over four years of a sentence. Was prison uh, hard, a doddle? Did it teach you anything? Very, what? very hard. It was hard. It was extremely hard. Very violent. And I've written a book that comes out on the 1st of surprise, April, surprise. The Devil and Miss Jones. <laughs> you, you met... Uh, Smith and Griffin. Yes. And uh, Myra Hindley as That's well. That's right, yes. Do you think the prison does any good or not? Uh, well, I think they should bring back uh, corporal punishment. Corporal punishment? Yes. Yes, but that's what you used to do before you got into prison, isn't it? No, 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 no I did not. You got it all wrong. You must read the book. You must right, read the book. book today, OK. Yes, not enough discipline. You think that's what, what needs to be brought back? Yes, discipline. lots of discipline, yes. All right, we've got somebody in the audience as well from the probation service. Where, uh, where is Malcolm? Yeah. Put your hand up, Malcolm, over there. Malcolm, uh, we, we hear a lot about probation being a soft option. In fact, I know uh, a friend of mine was recently hit over the head. This is serious, with a baseball bat. Uh, he was knocked unconscious, went to hospital, was in a hospital for a night. The person was caught for doing it, and all they got... This could have been a murder. This could have been a murder. All they got was 120 hours community service. I mean, what sort of deterrent is that? Community service, you say only 120 hours. I could dig somebody's garden. <laughs> you know, what the hell are you going to learn from that? Well, community service isn't meant to be uh, learning a skill. It's simply a punishment set up by the... <coughs> 
Criminal Justice Act to actually punish people to make a reparation to society for mm. their crime. But they're laughing behind it all. They're killing themselves laughing. They get fined as well and they end up paying about 2p a week. People are being, pay, are being fined according to their means now. They're not being fined 2p a week. They're being fined they what they nothing, can afford. If they have nothing, then, you know, it's, it's pointless fining them. What's the point of fining somebody who hasn't got a job anyway? I quite agree. You have to ask the magistrates why they yeah. find people. Are you happy with the sort of sentences or not? That's a very broad question. You can't answer it in a Okay, few well, let moments. me make it simpler for you, Malcolm. Uh, if we are going through time, and I'm not convinced we're going through any worse times than we went through in the 50s and 60s, I have to say that. But if, in fact, we are, then uh, do you think that there should be stiffer penalties? And if there were, do you think that people would actually be behaving differently? No, I don't think you need stiffer penalties. I think you need to punish people according to the crime they commit. Mm. Okay, let me go back to Terry Dix down here. Terry, you are known as the Hangham and Flogham MP of the Tory party. You're quite, you're quite, could the bard shut up for a few moments? You're making fools of yourselves, just sit still. You are actually known, quite rightly, for, for taking a tough line. You believe in, in, in strong discipline. Is that not going to backfire? Are you not in danger? I mean, if you go around and you belt somebody <coughs> for doing something cold-bloodedly, or you hang somebody and... A few years later you find, of course, the conviction was unsafe. Are you not in danger of making society more ruthless? Well, we, we've taken the soft option. All the do-gooders and the bleeding hearts have controlled uh, our society for donkey's years. And where are we? No better off at all. We've moved away from discipline in, in the home, discipline in the schools, discipline in, in uh, board stools, which we haven't got now, discipline in prisons, which is... I mean, I know people who are open prisons where they play cricket. The two prisons built under my government... Shouldn't they be well, playing cricket in prison? No, not at all. What should they do in well, prison? Well, let me tell you, well, I, somebody said to me, what about the slopping out and my answer is quite clear if they didn't slip in they wouldn't have to slop out all of those in prison except those on remand are there by choice and if they chose to choose to go into prison i don't care if they're locked up 23 hours a day seven days a week okay There's adam no prison reform trust adam the problem with this approach is that of course we've tried it in the past we haven't and it was worse the was conservatives worse? in 1979 set up the detention center system one of these panics happened in 79 the response was set up detention centres there, it was military style, young kids had their hair cut short, they were marched about the place, made to do hard physical work. What was the result? The result was that 80% of those young kids mm. ended up committing further offences within a two-year period. That's far worse than any other of these, quote, soft options. The probation option, actually, if we're interested in preventing crime, reducing the amount of crime, probation actually is okay. much more successful. Stephen, I mean, I've heard it say, although I think you've, uh, you've softened your, your feelings on this, you, you happen to say that you'd like to see things like homosexuality made a, a le uh, uh, illegal. You'd like to see people who live in uh, uh, unsavoury uh, lifestyles brought to book. And you think that that would make some some kind of uh, improvement in the way we live. You've, you've changed your mind, I think. I heard differently now. You don't want to see homosexuals locked up, do you? You've got to start from where you are. and You can't recriminalise homosexuality now. You'd like what to, the though, interesting wouldn't you? Thing is, the interesting thing is that the 67 Sexual Offences Act didn't do what it's... Uh, um, the people who framed it intended it was intended to help homosexuals come forward for treatment free from the uh, threat of prosecution yes it was this, was, see, this was said in the house um, of lords uh, and of course Stephen, what it actually did was start a homosexual subculture yeah but i mean so, Stephen, if 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 we are homosexual and i mean i don't know whether you are Stephen or not but no, i mean I'm not if we, uh, you, or, you yeah. know um, uh, i'm actually i'm not but you know not. um i sometimes wish i were so i could get up your nose but uh, <laughs> Very generous you, of you, James. Very yeah, generous. Do you really feel, though, that that is a helpful sort of uh, argument to put forward in this day and age? Well, it might not be helpful, but you've got to look at the evidence, and the evidence is that nobody's born like it and nobody's stuck like it. Oh, shut up! Do, uh, excuse shut up. They don't me, want to we, hear, you see. They don't want to know the truth. Could we go... Well, look, this young lady in the audience here, over here, could we go to her... Sorry, what do you think about that? I think Come it's on. a load of crap, to be honest yes. with you. Yes. Why? What? That's a you good idea. Shut you up, Stephen, evidence, just one moment, Stephen. Stephen, Sorry? let her answer. If you run out of argument, that's my advice. Yeah, not, well, it, it's what you've just done. Isn't what it? she's actually saying, Stephen, what she is saying is she is so amazed to hear anybody say that sort of yeah, thing that she can't. Yeah, it's right out of order. That's where what she's you're coming saying. from. It's all right. Yeah, it really is out of order. I mean, I, as far, bringing out. <laughs> Stephen, as yes. far as I can see, most of the most of the criminal activity that is, is not caused by people who, who seem to have a kind of loving. Uh, lifestyle is caused by people who want to go out and show how macho they are. 
Is it? Well, yes. I think so, don't you? Well, look, macho man isn't, isn't the ideal man um, any more than new man is. Yes. Both of those are, are, are complete travesties. What? Glenn. Yeah, can I just say, there has to be a, a firm, strong deterrent. But with that deterrent... Are we hanging and flogging still, Glenn? Do you say, believe in hanging? No, let me just say this. No, answer but the question that... first, Glenn. We haven't got a lot of time. Do you believe in hanging? Um, I believe in, in a, a sentence being strong. And if, if there is a murder committed and a person is convicted of murder, if they are put into prison then that should be for life. If A life sentence should okay. be a life sentence. So you don't but, believe in hanging? Well, I didn't say that. No, I, I know, but that. I wondered why you won't I, give I, me a straight answer. Well, all right, if, if you press me, I would say yes. I'm I believe you. I believe in capital punishment. You do. But and this is, is from an evangelist. You just, I'm but worried you just, about this because, no, no, you know, but, surely if we're going to live in society that is better, that if we start carrying out murder no. ourselves as a society, no. then we yeah. know better from the people. Oh, but James, I'm away with you. No. Look, we're killing... <laughs> We're oh, Stephen, Stephen, just let's hear Glyn no, answer listen. first. Let me hear Glyn and no. then you go. I, I, wanted to, I wanted to make a point. If you let me just do that now, I've answered your question. There, with the deterrent, there, there must be the worth of the individual because every individual is unique and every individual is important. And although an, an individual commits a crime, there must be... Um, uh, they must be taught the worth of themselves. Maybe within prison, the prison structure needs to be changed so that within prison... They, they are um, made to feel that the mm. worth of themselves okay, and I also... Think I, I think I not, know, not you're discipline. just... You, you know, OK. Is there, can we just have a show of hands in the audience? Can we get a, a long shot of the audience? How many people here would like to see uh, hanging brought back? Uh, fairly, would anybody here like to see hanging brought capital back? Punishment. Not really. Or capital pun Any sort of capital, any sort of well, state do, yeah. killing? Anybody? Well, they don't Keep no. them three years to make sure that they have committed the crime. I see. Three years. Yeah. Okay, so that means the Birmingham, uh, go, they'd have been killed anyway. Uh, yeah. yeah. Alan, you've been very quiet. Uh, the Labour Party always seems to be quiet at the moment. I don't know why. We're never given the opportunity, uh, that's fine. Please, we're coming, up, we're coming up to the end, Alan. Say something that's going to give me some hope, because so far I have none. Well, the first thing that you've got to do is to look why crime is happening in society. And, of course, if because you Because we're wanted... jealous, there are no jobs, well, people are if bored wanted... stiff. People are yeah. bored. They got yeah, nothing you to give me, do. You give me the answer. If, you, if, a lunatic, sure, a if a lunatic ruler wanted to increase crime in our society, he would take most of the measures that the Conservative Party oh. has taken over the last oh, ten years, destroy way. the education system, destroy <laughs> training, destroy hope for young people. Well, Alan, but you. having right. said that, the individual is responsible for their actions. So what we need to do is to get the balance right, the responsibility of the individual and the responsibility of the government to create a healthy community in which people can make their own choices about the life they lead. So you think the Thatcher's years are responsible for what we're suffering now? No, I think they've encouraged the sort of environment in which crime yeah. can grow. The responsibility stays with the individual for what you do, but they've created an environment that has discouraged responsibility, discouraged the okay. family... One last question over here all to Terry sorts of Terry, I want, I want to know, Terry, what can we do? We have so far, and I don't know whether you admit this, destroyed people's aspirations. There are not enough jobs. There are not enough things for people to do. Everything needs money now. What can you do? Well, first of all, you can't say that's a, that, that justifies crime. Because you haven't got a job, you've got no... And, and Who said it did? Looks, your future looks uh, bleak. That doesn't justify crime. Nobody said of it course. does, Terry. Hang on, Al, I didn't do it to you. What we've got to make no, sure is... About ten jobs, seconds. And here. we're moving towards creating more. We've got to... It's, it's unhappy to be unemployed and suffering. But that doesn't excuse self-discipline, and it doesn't justify beating all people right up then. and mugging in the street. Okay, this is a, a di discussion that's going to go on later, I'm afraid. Uh, unfortunately, we've run out of time. Just before we go, let me remind you, if you want to go away on that holiday, don't forget the question, which island uh, is San Antonio on? Is it uh, Ibiza? Is it the Isle of Wight? Or is it... Uh, where was the other island? I've forgotten the other island. Anyway, if you would like to uh, enter the competition, then you can ring on 0891 900 007. In the meantime, from all of us here, thank you very much indeed. Good night. Now, uh, I think... I think that, um... I think that Terry...